Your thoughts on what you heard last night in video or whatever topic you're interested in? Kristen! Hey! <laughs> well, I think everyone's excited about NVIDIA. If you don't have their stock, you definitely should have it. And I think Jensen Huang, I think is all we would agree on, is the FSD for Tesla and autonomy is way ahead. So I think that uh, you don't have to convince anybody in this room. Um, I was listening to Elon most of his uh, Path of mm. X live stream, and he did reply because I asked the question. I said... Will Grok be able to go in all Teslas? And he's oh, you were the one that asked the question. Go ahead, go K10. Yeah. yeah, I just want to know. I mean, I know that it's on the cloud and everything, but I'm like, still, there's all this AI three, AI two, and then the AI four, AI five coming. And he said it should go to all the Teslas, but I still kind of wonder if that means from the ones made going forward. <laughs> I just want more clarification. Mm. Interesting. Do you know if it's just the, you know, just an the LLM, the Grok that we see in X, and you can ask it questions, and that's it? Or is it going to be, hey, open up the trunk and you know, turn off, turn off the auto, the windshield wipers? I think. I mean, I, it does. It makes sense that it should be a, it, like interactive. I don't know why you would just put Grok there to not be interactive. I think it would do a lot of things for the car. I would imagine with 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 some things um, that it couldn't do. I I mean, you know, cap some things for safety. But I would think it'd be interactive. From I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. It is very exciting. It's going to change the the game. Omar, when you have your hand up, Robert, go ahead, Omar. What, um, uh, the, the, there's so many conversations uh, the, that we could d dig on. On let's go to Nvidia. Uh, um, I was at the keynote last night, and he, Jensen was laying out a Stanford level course on how the future will work, and it went over a lot of people's heads. I was watching people around me in the audience, and they were getting bored. And they were st struggling mentally to keep up with because they don't know the terms of scaling laws. They're not on X.com uh, in the AI community listening to Omar or me or you. Um, they don't know what reinforcement learning is. They uh, Jensen was throwing term after term after term at them and trying to get everybody up to speed at what is going on. And what is going on is AI is about to take over everything. If you're not talking with like chat GPT at a deep level, you, you don't understand what's what it is capable of. Um, and Grok is about to come with a new model that's going to blow away a uh, chat GPT. That's going to be underneath uh, the the system that's in, in the car, Grok. You're going to soon be talking to Grok with four, three of your friends in a vehicle it's going to know who is talking to the car, to the ai it's going to be able to respond to you and it's going to be able to respond to you at a phd level on every fucking topic there is you want to know what's uh, what who got buddy guy is you can talk to grok about it he'll you know it'll go into depth about uh, music and but buddy guy is a famous guitar player a really talented guitar player right you want to know about a nightclub you're going to talk to grok you want to know what restaurants are around you you're going to talk to grok you want to know what the uh, historical landmark is right uh, ahead of you you're going to talk to grok and you're going to talk to Grok about designing drugs or making software. Think about this one. Mm -hmm. Soon you're going to be talking to Grok and asking it to make you a new video game for your screen and your Tesla. And mm -hmm. within a few milliseconds, it's making the game. It's doing QA on the game. And then it's downloading an executable to your Tesla so you can run a new game that came out of your mind with Grok. And it's going to be on the Tesla. That's coming soon, like now, like this year, right? That's and that's exciting. and that's why Grok in the car matters so much because it makes the experience of being in a Tesla better, but it certainly makes the experience of being in a cybercab better. And we're this war that's coming is about cyber is about robo taxi. The world of tra of transportation is going to change deeply because of robo taxi, and you all know that because you listen to Omar all day long. Right? <laughs> you know what's coming, at least at some level, because of that. Um, 
Yeah, so I think Nvidia went. Out, I I I predicted that the stock would go down while I was sitting there because uh, Jensen was giving you a Stanford Business class on AI and the future and how it's built and how it's worked and how many computers you need. You need three computers if you were listening carefully, right? You need a model building computer, you need a simulation computer, and then you need an inferencing computer to make the modern AI. And uh, he laid out all of that. And I'm a lot, that's why I'm long-term on NVIDIA because the market will figure out what he said last night. And maybe uh, everybody should watch that speech a couple of times and learn a few things and get up to date and start talking to your AI about it, right? What does that all mean that he, that he just announced? He announced a new kind of computing. I call it the holodeck. Uh, the holodeck is going to know everything about everything eventually. And it's going to be able to generate everything, anything on everything, particularly if you're wearing a pair of glasses. And there's a whole bunch of glasses here at the Consumer Electronics Show. I've been sharing some of the videos of the glasses makers, right? So there's a new kind of consumer electronics coming. And that's going to change uh, how we interact with our cars, how we interact with our AIs, and how we build our businesses, and on and on. And Omar has his hand up, and I'd rather listen yeah. to Omar than myself. So thanks. <laughs> well, thank you for giving that summary. Omar? Yeah, it's an interesting point Simon brought up that everybody else needs to partner together. Nobody else has the capacity to perform a vertically integrated solution on autonomy. You've got companies like NVIDIA partnering with car makers, partnering with other companies to run the rideshare network and maintain the fleet. It's very fractured. And that typically leads to a user experience that isn't as good. But, you know, I think a really important point for investors to understand is that technology companies and new tech products can create a durable advantage that lasts for quite some time and is very uh, profitable. So, you know, this idea that, well, once Tesla solves autonomy, everyone will have it. So it's not valuable. This is probably one of the most poisonous ideas for investors, because if you believe this, then, well, it doesn't matter. You don't need to invest in breakthrough new technologies. And you look at sort of your Mag7 or your other big tech companies, even, you know, Airbnb, Uber, lesser uh, big tech companies that aren't in the Mag7, and they've all been able to create a durable advantage that's not based on gatekeeping a technology, right? So you look at Google, for example. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had told an early investor in Google, well, everybody's going to have search. Alta Vista's already doing it. Yahoo's already doing it. These Google guys, it's just not worth much. Well, everybody does have search technology, but the network effects of People going to Google, feeding input back in about what is actually what they're looking for, people optimizing for Google, that was very powerful. I mean, you look at Apple, if you said, well, uh, everyone's going to have a touchscreen OS and other phones are out there that have features that Apple doesn't have, you know, they got foldable phones and all kinds of things. Android's become super advanced, but they still have a durable advantage. They're still printing money. and. That's in part because of network effects. I text somebody, they've got the blue bubble, I've got the blue bubble. We are in the same product. Every person who comes in makes it more valuable. You can look, you can look at so many other examples. I mean, Uber and Lyft, they have literally the exact same product, right? Imagine if you told people, well, everybody's going to have ride sharing. Uber's the only company in the world now making money doing ride sharing, and Lyft is a fraction of the size.